Here we go. Man, Pastor Say is in the house. Welcome, Pastor. Come on. Pleasure Make some you. noise. So, mm. uh, yeah, guys, man, just uh, drop some fire emojis in the comments there below. Let Pastor Say know that we appreciate him and having him on here tonight. So, Pastor, man, once again, it's a pleasure to have you on second time. But, um, and, uh, Recently, we were on your podcast, and man, praise God, it's just God's doing great things <laughs> over there in France. But uh, yeah, man, is it, uh, anything you want to quickly say, introduce yourself, because there's anyone else who's just um, going to finally meet you or hear you tonight. Amen. I think we're having trouble with the sound. Yeah. <laughs> is it on his end? Sorry, Pastor. Can you hear us, Pastor? I think we're having trouble with the sound. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, bro. Hey, guys. Oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that is what me. it's like. That That's what it's like for someone to not have dominion. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's someone that's defeated. But anyways, man. Uh, carry on, Pastor. Go for it, man. Let's go. No, definitely. Thank you, guys, for having me on. Um, it's a privilege, a privilege and honor for me to share uh, this platform with you guys to, to you know, enable people's, uh, God's people to know who they are in Christ. And uh, yeah, it's really, I'm looking forward for it. Dominion is a very important topic to be talking about. And I'm sure everyone that is watching, make sure you do share it with a friend and family. Uh, because understanding the dominion you have in Christ, understanding who you are and the rights that you have in Christ will will allow you to live the true life in Christ. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing tonight. Uh, and I'm looking forward, you know, just to have a conversation with my brothers there uh, from Sydney. Now, all the way here in France, we, we are, you know, borders are opening up. Uh, restrictions are being taken off. It's 10 a.m. here, yeah, and we are on fire here, yeah. ready to, to God. share what God has put on our hearts. So, come on. Come on. Yeah, so man, um, I know everyone that's watching, real quick, man, just share, guys. You know, real quick, share is so important. Like I said, man, we want to get as many people as we can watching this live, like I said, especially here in Sydney. We're back in lockdown again. It's such a shame that we're back in lockdown. That's right. And, um, you guys are opening sure, up. I'm pretty, we're, sure, we're you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure people in Sydney have got nothing better to do. So I'm telling you, I'll share this with somebody. Add your family in. And I'm telling you, I guarantee you're going to be blessed on us. We speak about Dominion. And uh, and and authority as a believer. So uh, that's right. Just share that real quick, guys. Once again, but um, like I said, man, last time, as Pastor Sam was on here before, we were speaking about um, you know, character, and he's sharing his testimonies out with us. And I'm telling you guys tonight. I'm telling you, just I want you to everyone that's watching me, just close the, the door in your room or whatever it is. Don't let anything distract you tonight, because I promise you tonight, you're gonna pick up some real important keys. They're going to help you live your life, especially now, as us for Sydney, we're in lockdown. And, uh, you know, a lot of churches are now all shut down because apparently they're not essential. And, you know, and a lot of people might slam us tonight for this. And they're going to say, oh, but, you know, you don't understand, but you don't understand. But I'll tell you one thing I understand. I understand the Bible. And I understand the end time that we're in. And, uh, you know, that's why um, tonight we're talking about dominion. Because you don't understand, believe what. You don't understand the power and the authority that you have. You don't understand that you have the keys that you can bind and, you know, you can loose mm. here on earth. You don't understand. And that's what we want you to understand tonight. So anyways, man, let's get let's get into this tonight, brothers and sisters. As everyone's going to share this, you know, it's going to give it over to, to Brother Knox. And, and, you know, Dominion, let's talk about Dominion. Right. You know, a lot of people tonight, I'm pretty sure... They might have some sort of a grasp, but let's really break Someone's it down. Someone's probably tonight. thinking Dominion. No, that was actually so dry. You guys know the minions in there. Anyways, Dominion. <laughs> what is Dominion? Here he goes again. Here he goes again, Pastor. He goes says a little joke and then says oh, it. Oh, <laughs> that, that was kind of like an, an ass break for everybody that's there. But anyways, guys, you guys that are tuning in, what is Dominion? Hey, man, what is Dominion? Why is it important that we have dominion? Why are we doing this podcast Come on. on dominion? I want to say this before I pass it over to my brother in France. Is that dominion comes from the word dominate. Come on. We see dominion is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 26 to 28. Dominion comes from God. Mm. And we've got to understand that we are created in the image of God. We are created to be dominant. 
I'm not talking about, you know, forcing people to, you know, to do whatever you say, but we have dominion and authority. Amen. So dominion is basically, you know, life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you demand mm. according to the word of God. Say that Ooh, one more time. You know? Say that one more time, Knox. <laughs> life doesn't give Life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you demand. Mm. And that's what wow. we're talking about when we're talking about dominion. We're talking about having life your way. Yeah, I said it. Your way because, you know, for example, I've got, I've got one of my brothers that used to always say to me, it is what it is. Mm. Everyone kind of knows what you know, that saying. And I always say to him, it's not what it is. It's whatever you make it to be. Mm. Wow. Because you are, you know, as a believer, you've got to understand your dominion. And so dominion comes from the word dominate. You know, the Hebrew word for dominion that's mentioned in uh, Genesis 1 verse 26 um, and 3 to 28 is the word rada. Mm. Amen. Mm. Which means to have power, how do you, how do you to rule, and to tread upon. Um, R-A-D-A-H. Mm, wow. So that's Drop the word that God numbers. uses. That's the word that God used when he created Adam and Eve. You know what? I'm going to quickly read the scripture. I'm going to pass it over to my brother. Um, you know, just to touch a bit mm. about, uh, you know, dominion. So we're just talking about what is dominion and where does it come from? So Brother Knox is going to go straight That's there. That's right. So I want to read Genesis 1, 26 to 28. It says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Amen. So first thing you guys got to understand is you're created in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. I'm not created in the image of a dog. I'm not created to be, you know, you know, like a, a rock a monkey, or something. A monkey. We're created in the <laughs> image of God. You know, you guys got to notice that from the beginning, you know, since creation till now, why is it that you don't see any other animals you know, you don't go to the ocean and they have some Atlantic city where the dolphins are, you know, got shops and markets down there. You don't see that. Animals just live and survive. You know, they're just trying to survive and, and live life. Us as human beings, we have the ability to create, you know, you know, all this stuff because we are created in the image of God. And look what God says here in verse 27, 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So there you have it again. Isn't it interesting that when God created mankind, they, he blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And then he said, have dominion. Mm, come on. Then he said, have dominion. So mm. I just want to encourage you guys. What is dominion? Dominion means to dominate. So I don't know, say if you want to touch up on that and then uh, just start rolling off in the back of that, bro. Man. Definitely. And it's very important. And, um, you know, when we, when we speak, when we want to understand a topic, mm. we must go to the beginning. And yeah. mm. I love how my brother Knox, he started off from Genesis 1 because in Genesis 1, verse 26 to 28 it's this is a covenant god is forming yeah. and remember the god that we are serving is a covenant god mm, come on and here it, this is the ad uh, this is the adamic covenant the first one Man. and so here in in genesis 1 verse 26 to 28 specifically verse 28 he gives us five i guess benefits from this covenant for us wow. as humans, as God's wow. creation. And I think one thing we must understand, you know, people get so carried away with like when they have dreams, they're like, oh, I saw an angel, an angel appeared to <laughs> me or angel spoke to me, gave me a word or something like this. But we must understand that you, every person, every human being is the, is the greatest creation mm. of God. It, it's, the, it's the climax, it's, it's, it's the, you're the wow. highest creation. God loves us so much. And, you know, the, the reason why I said that is because, you know, even the angels, the Bible says the angels desire to look into salvation. 
Mm. They desire to look into what we have as a Christian. And this dominion thing, the dominion that we have in Christ, the angels desire to tap into that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, what happened with, with Lucifer. You know, you know when, when Lucifer, when he fell, he didn't just lose his position. Lucifer lost his name. Come on. Come on. Because in your name, the authority is attached to the name. Man. That's why the Bible says, when Jesus humbly did everything on the cross, he says that the, the, the name that is above every other name was given to him. Yeah. Remember, when, when yeah. Jesus was walking the earth, the name of Jesus didn't mean anything. Come but when he, when he fulfilled his, his, his purpose on earth, then the highest name, Jesus Christ, was given to him. Remember, yeah. his name means salvation. So when, when Jesus fulfilled, when Jesus dominated the devil, then a name, a, a, the authority that is higher than any other was given to him. And that's what Jesus has given to us as Christians. And here in Genesis 1 verse 28, the Bible says here, to be fruitful, we must be fruitful. Yeah. We must multiply. To we must replenish. <laughs> we must subdue. We must dominate. Yeah. And remember, these, these things that God has given to us, when he created humanity, it's eternal. Mm. Everything God does is eternal. No matter what you do with it, it's still going to stick. Because the Bible says that God doesn't give. He doesn't give and doesn't take away. Man. Once he gives a gift, he'll never take that gift away. Man. But if you misuse it, he will give someone else a greater gift. Come on. Or greater anointing. For example, mm. with David and Saul. Yeah. Saul was anointed. Yeah, the first king anointed for Israel. Yep. He misused the gift and then what happened? God gave, he anointed David and then yep. what happened to David? Yep. David went on to be undefeated in the battlefield <laughs> and Saul so died in the battlefield. David knew that his, 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 his dominion or the authority that he would carry would not come in the name of David. Yeah, Will right. come in the name of the Lord because he says that I come, he said to Goliath, I yeah. come in front of you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Yeah, come on. He didn't say, I come with oh. you as a shepherd boy. <laughs> he said, I come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So your dominion first, mm. to understand who you are in Christ, you must understand who you are worshipping. Who are you living for? Yeah. Because God says here, if you understand the covenant, this is the first covenant. This is, uh, like I said, this is the Adamic covenant. Mm, if on. you understand the covenant, this is what God said. If you understand the covenant, these five things will follow you. You will be yeah. fruitful. You will multiply. You will replenish. Yeah, come on. And then at the end of it, the fifth one, he says, then you will dominate. So if you understand the God that gives you this covenant, the God that has this covenant with you, you will flourish. You will have all these things. Come but on. remember, as a Christian, it's different now. Yeah, that's right. We, we, Jesus said, you know, it's a, such a packed message. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to lead us somewhere. It's such a packed <laughs> message because it is, man. the it's brother a, started lot, us from man. Genesis. Mm. The brother started us from Genesis. And then after this, you, everyone knows what happened. After this, verse yeah. 1, we get this beautiful covenant with God. And then yeah. God says that you are the greatest creation of all. And then verse 2 and 3. The man falls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And then what does God what does God do? He makes another one. Mm, on. He makes another covenant. Man. So in the New Testament, because a lot of people say, you know, we are in covenant with God still <laughs> in the New Testament. But in the New Testament, it's a little bit different, brothers and sisters. Yeah. We are not we don't have a covenant with God in the New Testament. We are the fruit of the covenant. Mm. In the covenant they gave us, God gave us rules and regulation. He gave us, He gave them, you know, the promise. And then He gave them the the rules that you must, you know. He says, first He gave this. He says that you are created in my image. You have fruitful, multiply, replenish all these things. And then He says, do not eat from the, do not eat from the tree of life, and uh, the tree of good and evil. And then after that, He seals it when He takes uh, Eve. From the blood, uh, from the rib of Adam, because the covenant is always sealed with a bl with blood. Man, come on. 
And then in the, in the New Testament, remember what happens on the cross. Yeah. When, when, when Jesus was on the cross, the soldiers stuck a sword on his side. Man, come on. So when in the New, in the, new, in the Old Testament, the first one, when he, when he took Eve from Adam, he took him from the rib. Yeah, come on. So his wife was born in the Old Testament. Wow, come on. In the New Testament, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, the soldier stuck the sword mm. in his rib on his side. On. What was born? The church. Come yeah. on, bro. Now, Welcome the church is table. born. The church is born from the resurrection. In Acts Come 2, on. the church is born in the resurrection. Yep. So we don't have a covenant anymore. Mm. We are the fruit of what God said. Man. And that part of what God said is for us to dominate. Yeah, come on. So you, brothers and sisters, domin to dominate the on this earth is your right. Yeah, come on. It is your right as a child of God. Right. All of the blessings that come with Christ, it is your right to exercise. Right. The thing is, the reason why people don't exercise is because they lack knowledge. Yeah, come on. And that's the only thing. You know, people say the devil is so strong or... You know, sometimes when I sleep, the devil's bothering me. If the devil keeps you up at night, make him pay for it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, bro. Because people, you know, just, oh, the devil kept me up all night. So they're doing nothing about it. What do you, get on your knees and pray. Make the Man. devil pray. <laughs> if you pray in the name of Jesus, if you exercise the authority That's and right, dominate right. the devil yeah. <laughs> in Jesus' name, he won't come back. You, you know, Pastor, the, that, that's, that's the crazy thing is, you know, many of them are, you know, many Christians, you know, they don't, they don't understand. Like, how does it feel when you get defeated by an enemy that's already defeated? Like, like how would you feel <laughs> if you lose to a team that you've already beat? Like, I mean, you know what I mean? The devil is defeated. Yeah. Jesus said on that cross, it is finished. Mm. So as a believer, we're always fighting from a point of victory. You know, is the devil hey. above me or is the devil under my feet? The devil's mm. under my feet. So we're, we're always fighting from victory. Amen. It is finished. If you read from Genesis to Revelation, the devil is nothing but a loser and a sorry chump. You know, you see exactly, <laughs> like, in the book of, you see like, exactly like in the book of Esther, right? The devil, you know, he tried to raise up Haman, you know, to, you know like the first Hitler, the, you know, the first Holocaust. Wipe out all the Jews. Yeah, Amen. Amen. That's crazy. But God used Esther, a lady that humbled herself, that fasted and prayed and, and you know, came into agreement with what God said. Amen. And you see what happened, that God flipped everything back on Haman. Everything Haman was setting up for mm -hmm. Mordecai, those, those same gallows and that ended up being used for Amen. him. Whatever the enemy tries to come against you is going to be flipped on his head because we have power and dominion. Come on. We have all authority that Jesus gave to us. Amen. Exactly like what, what our brother say he was saying. At the resurrection, at the cross, things change. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, we, we, got, we had dominion. And then you read in chapter 3, when, when mankind were disobedient to God's commandments, we lost our right to, to domain in this world. Man. That's why the Bible puts Satan, the prince of the air, the god of this world. <clears throat> he started to rule because we, we lost that. Adam and Eve, their disobedience, we lost our authority and our dominion. That's why sickness came into this world. That's why we have poverty Come in this world. Me. That's why we have sin that entered into this world. Amen. It wasn't from God. People always think, well, if there's a God in heaven, why is there so much poverty in the world? Poverty isn't from God. Poverty was because of man's disobedience in the garden that when they ate from the, the tree that they were not, oh, you know, told not to, Amen. that's when sin, poverty, sickness entered into this world. And then you read Philippians chapter 2, Jesus Christ. He left his glory in heaven. He came down, you know, and lived as a man. You know, of course, he's fully God. I'm not saying he's not God. He lived as a man, fulfilled the covenant as a man. Re you know, uh, regained our dominion as a man on that cross and rose again on the third day and said, what? Well, now I'll give you all, all authority has been given unto me. Now I'll give it unto you. Amen. You know, and, and just real quick. And I, I just wanted past. to... Oh. No, you go, you go, boss. No, no, you go, Ben. No, no, you go, you go. I'll go after you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say because with uh, the covenant here in Genesis 1, 
26 and 28 this was what god gave to adam and eve of course because eve was inside adam at this time <laughs> Amen. and then the, when they lost when they lost their rights right. now to to be fruitful replenish all that stuff the five things that come with it what did they do is that god god still loved them he still clothed them and then he sent them and said you can't stay in this presence anymore you need to get out of here <laughs> and the blessings that they had the five blessings Man. went to lucifer so people people ask the question how come the devil has so much power it's because mm. he's walking around with adamic power come on, come on. he's walking around with the authority that god gave to adam the original blessing that god gave to man the devil stole it and the devil mm. understood that because he understands spiritual authority yeah come on that's why he the Bible says that he wanted to he wanted to exalt himself higher than the Lord. Yeah, that's right. So he understood that the position that he had wasn't the highest. So he said, oh, I want the highest one now. God says, nah, <laughs> humble yourself, Monga. <laughs> humble yourself, brother. <laughs> so the devil knew the, the, the devil knew spiritual authority. And what I'm trying to say here is that the devil is functioning under old authority. Mm. And he, how can he still dominate Christians that is functioning under a new covenant, under That's a right. new, under, mm. under a yeah. new life that we have in Christ? That's right. <laughs> the devil is using something old to do, mm. to defeat something that is brand new, which is you and I. Yeah. So once you understand this, that the devil is functioning under these five things, he's using Adamic blessings to defeat Christians. Come on, man. the one that is born after God, the one that is have dominion over over the earth what the, when once you understand that you you know how to put the devil in his place yeah. so i just wanted to share that to understand to help people maybe you don't know these things yeah. well, that how come I, the I, devil I, has all this authority how, how yeah. come the devil does this and do that it's because right. he's using that authority mm. that's right and that's what we need to understand man. like you know the devil has power you know the bible says that he has power but he doesn't have the power that we have. You know, we have authority. Mm. You can have power, but authority is a whole different thing. You know, authority is delegate, delegated power. And we have authority mm. yeah. given to us by the Last Lord subject. Jesus Christ. How do we know Beautiful. this? We find this in the scriptures about the devil is in Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4 verses, uh, verses 5. Amen? It says here, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, and took him to the highest point. Oh, sorry, not that verse. Verse 8. The, Matthew 4, verse 8 said, The next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And verse 9 says, I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel and worship me. See, the devil <laughs> wouldn't have nothing to give joke. if he didn't have anything. <laughs> Amen. That's right. He's, he's a bustler. He's already, he's already defeated. Amen. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you guys. The devil has power. That's why this world is rampant. That's why this world is rampant with sin. And we see things happening because the devil has power. But when it comes to the church, the devil does not have power over the church or over the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the, no, the Bible no, says, no. as he is in heaven, so shall Come we be here this. on this earth. Hey. I'll give you that scripture as well. Yeah. See you. It's in 1st John, 1st John 4 17 it says in this is the love made perfect in us so that we may have trust in the day of judgment for as he is in heaven even so are we in this world and that's what I'm saying this is coming from the New Testament for all those people that say oh you know let's talk about the old covenant the old testament no look it up check your facts Jack this is a 1st John <laughs> It says, as Wait, he is in so, heaven. So you're saying. As he is in heaven, so are we in this world. So I don't see Jesus crying. I don't <laughs> see Jesus being poor. I don't see Jesus being defeated. I see Jesus on the right hand side of the Father with all mm. glory and power in his hand. And he's interceding for you and I. He is speaking to the Father on our behalf. And that's what I'm telling you. You've got to know the power and the authority that you have and who's standing in your side talking mm. to the Father on your behalf. And that's Jesus Christ. That's your right, people. Believers, that is your right. Amen. 
that you have the right so, to cross the devil under your feet. So you're saying that we are to be like Christ on this earth? Come on. It's just that as we he can is walk, in heaven. That's, what, that's exactly people, what we're saying. <laughs> a lot of people think this is far A lot of people you know, think this is that's far right, A lot of people are like, bro, that's heresy. You know what I mean? That Jesus, listen, Christian means a little Christ. In the book of Acts, I think it's Acts chapter 12, at the church of Antioch, that's where Christians, that's what they labeled us. When they see the early church moving in such power, mm. moving in such dominion, casting out devils, healing the sick, preaching with authority, it says that, the, that, uh, that, you know, who are these men that are turning the world upside down? So they called them Christians. Come on. They called them little Christ. You know, but a lot of Christians, a lot of people today Come use that as a badge. <laughs> but hey, Sarah, you know what we're talking about? Hey, how many Brother. of us know that, uh, man, that was Jesus, that's not us, we're... We're just a we're just a piece of dirt. Come on, <laughs> man, you have power and this? dominion. Exercise it, man. I want to share this one verse, and I'll give it back over to Pastor. Another verse I want to give for you guys tonight. You know, I want to. I really want to get this into your spirit tonight. I don't want you to leave here without you know getting something into your spirit. I know my pastor, Pastor Say, wants it. Brother Knox will give you another verse here. Ephesians chapter two, verse six. It says, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. I don't know what kind of Bible you're reading, but my Bible says that I'm seated in heavenly places and heavenly realms with Jesus Christ. Church, that is your position. Believer, that is your position. You're fighting from heaven to earth. You're not fighting from heaven to, you know, from earth to heaven. No, you're fighting from heaven to earth. This is your, this is your power. This is your right. So quickly give it back to Pastor Sai, because I know he's going to share something as well. So Pastor, take it away. <laughs> Praise God. I'm just <laughs> trying to contain myself. This is, the, that verse just finishes, because uh, what Brother Knox said, he says that we fight. We are always fighting from a position of victory. And this verse kind of shows us how it's possible because when Christ died, we died. When he rose, we rose. When he was seated, we were seated. Mm. So when, when us as children, we are the, you know, when, when Isaiah talks about the, when he prophesies of the coming of Jesus Christ, he says that there, was a, there will be a seed that will prolong mm. the, the, the sun that will, that will come. As the church, we are the ones that are prolonging. We are prolonging God's work on earth. Come on. And part of God's work is domination. Mm. That's right. That's what we're trying to get to you here. That's that's our heart tonight. What we're trying to achieve here tonight is for you, brothers and sisters, to understand who you are in Christ. Man. So that the devil cannot no longer slap you around and people <laughs> that he uses around. Right. For example, the, the, the governments. Yeah, the family members, we, we have to remember, some friends that you have is demonic. Mm. Some yeah. friends are possessed. Come on, don't change that channel. If, if your friend doesn't talk, if your friends don't talk to your destiny, they are, yeah, they are stealing on. from you. Mm. Come on, praise God. Remember, Jesus just said to Peter, Jesus just said to Peter, no one has revealed this to you, but the, the God from heaven revealed the revelation mm. of who yeah. Jesus was to Peter. And then just afterwards, Peter comes to Jesus and says, oh, maybe you shouldn't go to the cross. And then Jesus says, hey, bro, relax. Humble yourself. Get behind me, Satan. Come on. <laughs> if the Get people here, man. don't talk to your destiny, they are possessed yeah. from the devil. Come on. People have to understand that. People think, oh, he's, but he's nice. But we're not here to make friends, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Jesus on, didn't man. say, oh, come, go out and win the world and make friends. He said, go out and win and make disciples. Mm, that's right. Come on. Man, come Sometimes on. disciples are not going to agree with you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Sometimes, you know, you, we're not here. To, I'm not here to build a following. I want people to see, when they see me, they should see dominion. When they come see on. me, they should see Christ. That's what we're trying to say here. And that's what that verse says from 1 John 4 verse 17. As he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is. Mm, Get this. In, in, in John 14, verse 12, Jesus come said, on. you can do greater works than I can. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, come on and then in John 20, 21, verse 25, the come Bible on. says that there is no books in the world that can contain the works that Jesus did. 
Amen. And then <laughs> one, first, uh, first John 4 verse 17, he says, as he is, so are we in this world. So mm. what I'm trying to say is, when you understand the dominion that you have, the world cannot contain you. That's why the world will always try to limit the church on earth so that they can exercise their authority on us. But that's not, why, that's not how it should work. That's yeah. why no one liked Jesus. That's why he went to the cross alone because he was exercising authority that there was unfamiliar to this Come world. When you, when you live out who you are in Christ, you will become unfamiliar. Yeah. You will become Come weird. Come but are you ready to pay that price? That's right. Jesus was willing to go alone to the cross so that people can be following him. Jesus was to die on the cross so that you can exercise the authority that he was doing for you. Yeah. Remember, Powerful, one thing is the reason why people don't exercise their authority is because of sin. Yeah, come on. Because they are they are they are they live, I guess, in regret. They live in the past too much. And it's the sin, this, the, 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 them as Christians, they're saying like they, they believe in Christ, they've come to Christ, but they still have sin lingering around in their yeah, lifestyle. Right. Let me just give you a come. verse here, brother. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Let me just give you a verse here because I'm not, I'm not just sharing you, you know, just talking nonsense. I'm sharing <laughs> with you what God's word says. <laughs> hey man, if you guys have your Bibles, in, man, in, follow along, follow along. Yeah, man, write some notes down, come on. Romans 6 verse 14. Mm. Oh, one of my favorite chapters. <laughs> Romans 6 and verse 14 for the people in the back. Now. It says, for there. sin, yeah, come on. for sin shall not have dominion over you. Oof, here we go. If you're not dominating in Christ, if you're not dominating your environment, your situation, then sin is dominating you. Yeah, come on. For we are not under the law. But under grace, That's right. sin, you know, sin came in because of the law. Mm. They couldn't tell what was sin until the law was given. Yeah, that's right. That the power of the law was to, I guess, highlight how yeah. sinful humanity was. So that they can know and understand that they need a God to forgive them or need a God to be merciful, need a God to love on. Yeah. But when grace was given... He says, now you must walk in love. Amen. But you were, like, like the last time when we were on my podcast, I said there's two reasons why people lack or there's two reasons why people don't live the life that they have in Christ. Two reasons. It's only because of fear and selfishness. That's all. <laughs> yeah. And, and God right. dealt with both of them. He gave That's faith it. for fear and he gave love for selfishness. Come on. That's why in the end, right now, in, this, in these times that we're living in, before I throw it back to the boys here, don't be ignorant of the weapons that God has given to you. Yeah. Dominion is a weapon that we must be using to, to fulfill God's plan or to continue to prolong God's will on earth. Yeah. If we don't walk in dominion, if we don't walk in the power and authority given to us, yeah, then the world will walk all over us. That's why, you know, we must understand with the story of Esther, God... The, the, the name of God is not mentioned once. Mm. But what, what they understood there with Mordecai and Esther is that they were patriotic. Yeah, they loved their nation. Come on. So they, they decided to fast and pray for their nation. Yeah. And then God did something because they were patriotic and they fasted and prayed. Right now, we are in a crisis. Mm. Come on. Crisis, the spiritual warfare we are in right now. But instead of complying to the rules and regulations of the government in your nation, mm, come on. Uh, have you been on your knees lately? Yeah. Mm. Have you been exercising like the authority that you have in Jesus' name? He yeah. says, when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He doesn't just say, he doesn't just say, when you have trouble, shout Jesus' name. He Man. says, when you pray, <laughs> when you're in communion with God, God will come down and fulfill His will. Praise God. That's what prayer, prayer is for. Prayer is not a, prayer, prayer is not a, you know, just ask for your, for, for, for yourself. That's right. Even asking for yourself, for your own things. God says, that's not the way to pray. You, yeah. you find that in the book of James. He says, when you ask on your, on your own lust, he says, you are praying a mist. Yeah, come on. Come on. He says, are you, the reason why God did something 
in for Monica and Esther is because they weren't thinking about just themselves. They were patriotic. Mm. They were thinking about the nation of Israel. Oh. They were thinking about the Jewish people. Praise God. Esther said to Mordecai, go out and tell everyone you know to fast and pray for three days. Yeah, praise God. Come on. He said, go tell, go tell everyone. That's what we're doing with this podcast. We don't just come on this podcast so that, <laughs> to hear us speak and preach. I don't really care about having the platform. I just yeah. want Jesus' name to be ruling and reigning on this earth. That's and right. I'm a part That's of right. that. My voice is for yeah. the instrument for the kingdom of God. Mm. Your voice, brothers and sisters, come on. is to be utilized for the kingdom of God. Praise God. So what I'm trying to say here, before I pass it back to the brothers, sorry guys, I'm no, <laughs> coming on. Hey, far away, far away. <laughs> yeah. no, don't be sorry, man. Hey, take sorry. the minion, take the minion, man. Come yeah. on. <laughs> it's just, we have to understand we are pilgrims on earth. We are mm. passing by. Mm. Don't settle here. If you're complying yeah. with the government, that means you're planning to stay here. Me, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not planning to stay here. Come on. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm not planning to stay here. David, <laughs> was, <laughs> David knew he was a pilgrim. Yeah. Or you, you read Hebrews 11. All the people, it says, by faith, Abraham did. By faith, Mo Moses did. By faith, Noah did. By faith, they did. Because they knew there were pilgrims passing mm. on this earth. That's why in this last day, you cannot live in dominion until you understand the faith that is required to live there. Yeah, that's right. Dominion, like I said, Jesus is everything. Mm. When, you, when you think about dominion, you think about Jesus. Yeah, come on. That's why people get stuck of sin, because they're not looking onto Jesus, they're looking unto themselves. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man, come on. That's why they, they feel weak. Yeah, that's right. Because they're not looking at Jesus. That's right. Glory Dominion. God, All of these things are, are, are a person. They have a personality. Man. Peace is a person. Peace is not a feeling. Yeah, come on. Peace, Peace is a person. Peace. Love is a person. Jesus, the Bible says God is love. Mm, come on. Mm, it's powerful, man. These man. things are they have a personality because of God gave them a personality. Yeah. God is the source of them all. He's the source of peace. He's the source of power. Man. He's the source of dominion. He is the source. So until you understand, Jesus Christ is your life. He is your everything. Right. You owe him everything. You know, people say, I paid the price. <laughs> you know, I paid the price. How come God's not doing nothing? You, you don't owe God anything. Come on, he paid for you. He purchased you. Yeah, oh, man, that's powerful, you, man. When you, when you live out in God's will, that's what God wants for you. Come on. He's right. not saying, oh, thank you for paying that price. He's not saying that because he's the one that paid the price for you. Come on. Man. Powerful. If you guys have anything else to add, because I don't want to continue. To <laughs> man, I'm just, like it's I said, good, man, I'm good. just enjoying, man. I'm just enjoying the word tonight, man. Powerful, man. And I just want to, like, touch on that, of what Pastor Say is saying. You know, Jesus is our greatest example. You know, the Bible says Jesus is our older brother. You know, that we should be like him. You know, we should be like Christ. Man. And that's what people need to understand. I'm going to read here. Because a lot of people, like what Pastor says, say, a lot of people have got the picture of Jesus wrong. This is what I tell a lot of people. Jesus already came as the Lamb of God. When he comes again, he's coming back as the judge. He's coming back with, you know, with the iron rod that he's going to rule and reign. That his government... It's not like the governments of this world. These governments of this Come world on. will all fall and they're all here temporarily. But our government mm. and our kingdom is eternal and it will reign even after when we leave. If, if Jesus tarries, it doesn't come back to take us home. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation chapter 1. Hey Amen. I'm going to read here that what this is the way that Jesus, you know, when I read this, and I remember it's this. early morning and I read this and I weeped over this because of who Jesus is. People have it wrong. They see Jesus with a little lamb in the grass with his staff, <laughs> you know, patting the little lamb. You don't understand that Jesus, he is the great I am. Amen. He's got, I'm going to read it here for you. It says here, Genesis, I mean, uh, Revelation chapter 1 and verses uh 12 or 13 it says and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the son of man he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest his head and his hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were like a flames of fire 
His feet Woo! were like polished bronze, refined in the, mm. in the furnace. And his voice thundered like a mighty ocean uh, waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth. And his face was like the sun of its, in its, all its brilliance. And verse 17 and 18, this is Jesus speaking. He says this, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. This is John seeing Jesus. He says, But he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I Come died, but son. look, I am alive forever and ever. Mm. Come on. Praise you, Lord. Amen. I love Amen. that. I am the living one. I died, mm. but look, I am alive and forever mm. and ever. And I hold the keys of death and the grave. Hey. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. I don't know about you. You should be excited. I'm excited when I hear that. <laughs> because that's my Savior. That's my Lord. That's my King. And what He has, that's what I have. On, Whatever bro. He does, yes. that's what I can do. That was like Peter yes. when he seen Jesus walk on the water. He saw Jesus and he said, Jesus, if you can walk on the water, I can walk on the water too. And a lot <laughs> of people today look at the Bible wrong. They say, oh no, we're not like God. We shouldn't. You don't understand. You're not reading your Bible. You're not reading your Bible. <clears throat> and I want you to understand tonight, to have dominion and power is to be like Jesus walked on this earth. He walked with dominion and power. That every sickness and disease bowed at his feet. That every demon was casted out at, the, at his word. This is the type of life that we need to live as well. You know, Pastor Sarah said earlier that we should do greater things. That is, the, that is what Jesus said. Those who believe in me shall do greater things. Come on. So where is the greater things? <laughs> the reason why there's no greater yeah. things is because we don't understand our position in Christ. We don't understand how he's seated. We don't understand, you know, what Jesus died for. A lot Come of people on, want to relate with the Jesus before, you know, Jesus when he died. But no one's relating with Jesus when he rose again. <laughs> That's where the power Ooh. is. The Bible says if Jesus never rose from the dead, then we're worse than the many, then we're worse than fools. But the, the, the good news is, mm. is that Come he on. rose again. Like he said there, I am alive. I am the risen one. I am alive mm. forevermore. Yes. And that's who us. that you should understand that we should be. We have that authority and that power and the dominion. Why? Because Jesus snatched it back from the devil. Amen. He took back the keys from the devil. That's <laughs> what it says in his word. That he took back the keys of life and death from the devil. And he gave it to the church. Who's the church? You that's watching me. Us that we're speaking that's to right. you tonight. Those who put their faith in Jesus. You have the authority and the dominion tonight. It's powerful, bro. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Knox, you can carry on with that, man. Oh, well, man, that's... Man, Get him, Knox. Glory. Get man, him, Lord, you guys, drop some flame emojis down in the chat. Everybody that's just tuning yeah, in, man, I'm... hit hit a share button on that, man. We're about to, you know, chink some demons, and we're taking dominion over social media. <laughs> we're taking dominion over in France and over here in Australia. Praise and you, man. Lord. And that's all about the grace of God. No, I want to share exactly, you know, just tell Roland of, of what the brother Ben here was saying that people need to understand their position. And, you know, Theo Osborne said it like this. Stop praying and asking God to do things that he's already given you the authority to do. Come on. Well, you know, for an example, if you have somebody in your house that's demonized, <laughs> and, you know, are you going to just sit there on your bed and, oh, Lord, I pray. Come on. Uh, help, my, help my brother, help my sister that is possessed by demons. Or did Jesus not say, go and cast out that devil in his name? Come on. You know, quit asking God, you know, to do things for you that he's already given you to do. That's you right. know, how many of us know this? You know, we, we don't know, uh, you know, when we're going through a storm, you know, I tell, I tell my storm how big God is. You know, but yeah. man, listen, you got to speak to the storm. Don't talk yeah. to it. Come on. You got to speak to your storm. Many people go to the storms and they're like, you know what? I'm going to tell my storm how big God is. That's how you're going to sound crazy and maybe find yourself in, the, in one of those, you know, have a white jacket wrapped around you. You need to speak to the storm in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to read this, uh, give you guys an example of dominion. Here's Jesus, Mark chapter 4. I want to read verse 35 to uh, verse 40. So it says, On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over. 
Come, uh, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You know, I want to say this. Jesus, first of all, Jesus said, Let us go on to the other side. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't say, Maybe we can go on to the other side. And when the storm you know, began to rock this boat, Peter... Peter's a fisherman. If there's anybody that understands about seas and, and storms and boats, it's Peter. Yeah. And here's Jesus yeah. sleeping in the middle of his storm. Come on. And everybody else is panicking. Peter's like, Lord, waking up, waking up Jesus. Lord, don't you care that we're not perishing? And listen to what Jesus done. Jesus gets up and he rebuked the wind. And then he said, peace be still. Mm. And he says to them, why are, you all so, why are you guys so afraid? You have no faith. You have no faith. Man. And that's like a lot of Christians nowadays. I'm going to go ahead and say it. You just have no faith. That's why when a worldwide <laughs> pandemic kicks in, you just don't believe in Psalms 91 anymore. <laughs> you got to sing all these, all these amazing songs. God, my Redeemer, God. And then when this virus kicks in, everybody's afraid. They've got their tail tucked between their legs. But I want to let you guys know that sometimes when you're going through the storm, take dominion. When you're going through the storm, you don't need to you know, wake up the master and say, oh, Jesus, don't you care that, that we're perishing? Sometimes you need to speak to the storm in the name of the master. Yeah. Sometimes when you're going through your storm, don't, don't get through your storm and just hit your knees. Oh, Lord, please help me. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I really need you. Get up. You take dominion. <laughs> you have power and authority. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verses 18, I have given you keys. That what you bind here on earth shall be bound in the heavenlies. On, what you power. loose in the earth shall be loosed in the heavenlies. The problem is they have no faith. We have no faith. You need to believe the dominion and the authority that was given to you from Jesus Christ. Amen. It's only when you believe that you can then exercise and begin to speak to your mountains. Begin to speak to your storms. You know, whatever you don't confront, you will never conquer. Whatever you don't Ooh. confront, you will never ever conquer. That's right. You know, you don't have to, you know, when life gives you lemons, just squeeze it and make lemon juice. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, some people drink throw some lemons back at life's head. Take dominion and authority that's given to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. I'm seated in heavenly Come places. On. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said to pray like this. Jesus said, our, heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. How are you going to do the come will on. of God here on earth as it is in heaven if you're not seated in your heavenly place? Come on. What come does on. it look like? You know, many people say this. Oh, well, you know, one day when we get to heaven, there's going to be no more sickness. We're going to be free. And, you know, the, hopefully the rapture comes soon. You know, we're just going to pack my bags and hide in the corner. Take dominion. Jesus is coming back for a bride that is going to take full dominion over the enemy. God is coming back for a bride that's not afraid, that's unashamed. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to pray. We need to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Mm. Don't wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. You can bring heaven here on earth and it's called taking dominion. Yeah. It's called taking dominion. And you know, like, before we'll I give it back to Pastor Sayer, man, like, everything they're not to say, and what we're saying here tonight, guys, it's not heresy. This is from the Word of God. Like, I don't know with people today, when I read the Bible, I read it personally. Everything the Bible is saying, I apply it to my life. If it says it in that word, guess what, guys? I'm going to believe it, and I'm going to claim that, <laughs> and I'm going to walk on it. But I don't understand that people can believe in this and say, oh, you know what, until we get to heaven, then we can finally experience what the Bible say. No, you can experience that now in your life today. You can, you can take authority and dominion and take control of your life. 
You know, I'm going to read you guys a verse. And this is a verse that I, when I'm praying and I'm in my, and when I'm in my war room, I will claim this word and I will stand on this word. When I walk out there to go and outreach, when I walk everywhere that I go, I stand on this word. Why? Because this is the weapons of our warfare. Amen? This is part of what we call having dominion. It's speaking the word of God. And it's in Joshua chapter 1 verses 3. It says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. I have given you every place that the sole of your foot treads. Everything that right. Jesus has done for. And I'm talking about health. I'm talking about wealth. I'm talking about, you know, you know, your family. You know, having a great relationship. Having, you know, I'm talking about, you know, everything in life. I'm talking about in your, in your church, in your ministry. Even with this disease right now, this coronavirus. I want you to know that you can take dominion and you don't have to accept it. You don't have to be like everyone else and go, oh, you know, hopefully we've got to stay safe. It doesn't touch us. No. What does the Bible say in Psalm 91? That no disease shall come near my house. No disease shall come near my Man. house. And you should be speaking that word of God, speaking it to the devil, speaking it come to on. everybody else. Because why? You're not like everyone else. Jesus Christ is your, you know, is your savior. And I'm going to quickly read one more before giving it over to Pastor Sire. As I just got this word just dropped into my spirit right now. We're going to go to the book of Malachi. Praise you, Lord. And then I'm going to give it over to Pastor Sire. I want to wrap it up. Pastor because, guys, there's so much that we can talk about about in dominion. Um, but we're going to just, we're just talking about the basis of dominion and where it comes from. But in, in, we're going to talk about it deeper, about, you know, dominion in, over sin, over death, over, you know, you know, the devil and his chump demons and, you know, many other things. <laughs> but uh, Malachi chapter 3. Praise you, Lord. I can just remember exactly what I was reading. Praise you, God. Glory. Hopefully you guys are, uh, you know, getting something tonight. Amen. Mm, that's right. Praise you. Amen. Death and hope, I'll, say, I'll, let you, I'll let you go and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll bring this verse back on at the end. Praise you. That was awesome uh, sharing. I hope everyone is receiving something, getting, you know, getting mm. fed. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, so. And if you didn't, Amen. you know, if you're trying to catch up with us, trying to understand, you know, where we are going with these things, or how to exercise dominion, it's pretty much dominion is dominating, dominating an area that you are to occupy. God has given us the earth to occupy and to dominate in. And to dominate, we have to have faith in the one that created us. That's how we. That's how you, brothers and sisters that are watching, that's how you're going to dominate. You're going to dominate by faith in Christ. Faith in who you are in Christ. And like I said, if you want to continue to grow, because dominate, um, the God is... I want to read a scripture actually, <clears throat> because this one is, is very powerful. In Luke 10 verse 19, the Bible says, and Jesus said, Jesus said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions mm, and all and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Someone asked a question, how can a virus hurt you when the Bible says nothing by any means can hurt you? <laughs> Maybe you don't understand the authority mm. that God has given to you. And understand this, this is the revelation. This is before <clears throat> Jesus died. Mm, this powerful, is before man. Jesus Christ went to the cross. So he gave the authority and the, the power to the disciples before he went to the cross. Mm. So what God is so worried, he's not worried about you having enough power to defeat the devil. What he's worried about is you understanding that you have the power to dominate and to, to exercise your mm, dominion that's right, bro. Um, on this earth. That's what it is. He's not worried that if you have enough, he's not looking at you. Oh, babe, I don't know if I gave you enough to rule and reign over there. Yeah, come on. He's the, the amount doesn't mean nothing to God. He, he mm. doesn't even exist in amounts. There's nothing that can contain him. 
I just read it to you in John 21 verse 25. It says, if the books were gathered and written down, his yeah, works were right. written down, nothing in this world could have contained it. So he had to leave this earth because this earth couldn't contain him. Yeah. Some of us are asking, get me out of here. Because you're not exercising the authority that God yeah, has given to right. you. When you exercise, the world is gonna give you, the world is gonna look at you and say, I want this guy out of here. Yeah, that's right. You look at this <clears throat> with Mos uh, with with Moses, God had to remind him, bro, you have to die now. It's your time. <laughs> this is your time. You have to get out of here. Yeah. Because I told you you're not gonna go into the promised land. So he gives he gives it to Joshua. Yeah, come on, but everyone is so worried about death. Yeah. We just read you the scripture. The one that holds the keys to death is Jesus Christ. That's right, man. That's mm. what we no longer. And here, let me is. just finish with this one, Ben. Before you read, I don't know if you found your scripture, but yeah, let me yeah. just go over yeah. here and read this one, man. So, if you found your scripture, Ben, you can go ahead and read it. Okay. Um. So you know, my scripture here before I read it, guys, is just that you know, as we're talking about dominion, there's there's a clear distinct. That you can see in believers today like i really believe as everyone knows 2020 was a year of shaking a year of shifting and i know god is he's he's sifting his church that now he's gonna really see the people that are really all for jesus and those that are half wow. half because you can't sit on the fence in this day and age that we're living in nothing will never go back to being the same a lot of people are looking and going, you know what, sooner or later it's going to get back to normal. Nothing will get back to normal. Why? Because the Bible says, as the days drawing near with the coming of our Lord, it will get worse for the world. Many more diseases will come. Many mm -hmm. more plagues will come. But I'm telling you, the good news is, for us believers, it doesn't get worse for us. It gets better for us. Why? Because we are in the promises. We stand on the promises. And we, you know, our father is a good father. He's not a terrible father. He doesn't run away and go, oh, you know what, you guys can do with the problem. No. He's dealt with all the problems. And that's what I'm going to read to you here. It's in the book of Malachi. And this is a prophetic book as well. And it says here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. It says, they will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. So if that's you, if you're an obedient child, God is going to spare you these last mm. days. He said, I will spare you as I, as I spare an obedient child. He says, then you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. There will be a difference between the righteous and the wicked. There will be a difference in those that know what dominion and power is in, the, in, you know, in Jesus Christ. And those who live according to the ways of the world and say, you know what, we're just going to conform and we're just going to do whatever the government asks us to do because it's, it's a Christian thing to do. No, you need to look at the context of what the Bible is saying. Most of the Bible was written in jail in the New Testament, if you don't understand that. Why? Because Paul was a man that was trying to, you know, establish the, you know, the foundations of what we have today. And unfortunately, at the time, they wanted to kill him and stop him from what he's doing. And that's exactly wow. where we're heading today. Mm. If you're living in your comfortable country right now, putting your feet up, let me tell you, it's only a matter of time before it comes where they're going to say that you can't be a Christian. You can't preach the word of God. You can't. They're already censoring us on YouTube and on Facebook. That's what I'm saying to you today. That if you don't understand where we're at right now, and if you don't understand to take dominion and authority today for your nation, for your church, for your family, I'm sorry, but you're going to be living a very terrible life, wishing, oh, Jesus, please come and take us now. No. You should be preparing the way for the, you know, for, for the bridegroom to come. That's how we should be. Mm. We should be thriving and not surviving, but there's too many survivors today. And man, so that's what I want to share with you guys today. Guys, live a life of dominion and authority. Take authority and dominion in your life. And it's, you know, going to give it to Pastor Sire, and he's going to share with us. Praise God. I just want to finish with this one, and that's a powerful verse. Woo. Praise you, Lord. Yeah, it just dropped in my spirit, man. I didn't plan to speak on it tonight, but I remember I was writing this down the other night and, and just dropped in my spirit right now. Praise God. Let me just finish with this, and then um, <clears throat> in First 
Corinthians. So we're going to, I guess we're finishing off with just sharing you yeah. with you guys scriptures <clears throat> so that you can, you know, if you maybe you're watching this live or the real podcast, yeah. I encourage you to study the scriptures for yourself. Mm. Study yeah, it because right. these are the scriptures that we have looked at and God has spoken to us and revealed to us revelation because right. the scriptures, if you just read it, it becomes a ritual thing. It becomes a religious <laughs> practice of you just reading a verse a day. But when you get into the scriptures and meditate on it, when you stay in it long enough, God will speak to you. God will reveal to you revelations of the word of God. So I just want to share with us 1 Corinthians 5, 15 actually. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 and 58. The Bible says, Thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we have, brothers and sisters. We have the victory. You are victorious. You've got to believe it. And not just believe it, but you've got to act on it. And the way you act on it is to simply pro pro uh, proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, that's important, the beloved yeah. <laughs> in the scriptures it's so important to you know every word mean has a meaning you are beloved my brothers and sisters we are not here trying to condemn the church we are here to tell you you are beloved right. and therefore exercise the authority God has given mm -hmm. to you because you are the beloved yeah. God wants you to exercise mm -hmm. He wants you to function. He doesn't want you to get into heaven. Did you know we are the ones that will judge angels? Mm. Come on. The angels are there waiting to be judged by us. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But oh, God leaves His children here yeah. so that we can exercise and dominate the work of the devil. Come on. He didn't leave us here just so that we can just relax, put our feet up and watch the news and be like, Oh! Another virus, another this and that. Another strain. <laughs> another something, you know, another. <laughs> the market is going up, the market is going down. The one that holds the currency is in heaven. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. But verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Oh, be steadfast. <laughs> Unmovable. Don't be moved by what's going on. on. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yeah. So maybe someone can say, so someone has asked me, how do you stay on fire for God? Yeah. I said, how can I not? <laughs> Come on. After what He's done for me, this is the least. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You cannot exercise the things in Christ until you have a revelation of who He is. What He's truly done for you. And when you get into the Word and build your faith, you will start to now want to exercise the dominion, the rights that you have in Christ. Amen. It says, be steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable. You know, in the book of James 1 verse 8, it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. So as a Christian, you have to be focused. Your mind has to be fixed on the things of Christ, on growing the kingdom. You can't be growing the kingdom and still want a touch of the earth. Yeah. Remember what I said. We are pilgrims here, brothers and sisters. You are not staying here. Don't set up camp here. You are leaving this earth. It says always abounding. The way you stay on fire for God, is simply just get busy doing his work. Amen. Maybe it's a podcast online. Maybe it's going on the street and talking with someone. Right. Maybe it's, I don't know, giving out Christian materials. Yeah. We, we are here to bombard the earth with the gospel. So get busy doing the work of... If you're not busy doing the work of the Lord, you'll get busy doing the work of the devil. <laughs> brother, brother Ben just read us the scripture from Malachi and it's a prophecy. This is a prophecy, Malachi, the book of prophet. He says that, you know, God is going to come out, he's going to look for those that are serving God and those that are not serving God. 
And what is happening right now? We still have people that are serving God and people that are not serving God. But what we are trying to say to you here, when you understand the dominion you have in Christ, you, will, you, you won't even question your service for God. You won't even have to work yourself up to, 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 to do something for the Lord. You, you will just do it. It will become natural to you. That's right. Let me finish the verse here for as much as you know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Nothing you do for the Lord is in vain. Everything counts that you do for the kingdom. So what I want to finish with here, I just want to say to you, brothers and sisters, be conscious that our time is short. Be conscious that the devil is roaming around like a lion, toothless lion, seeking those and isolating those that are weak. Don't be weak. The Bible just shows here. We have the victory in Christ. Exercise the dominion over the devil. Therefore, you'll be able to exercise your dominion in whatever area that God has placed you in. Right. You are not weak. You are full of faith. You are beloved. Mm -hmm. Be steadfast. My be Lord. unmovable in serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, that was powerful, Pastor, man. And, uh, man, like I said, everyone that's watching us tonight, like I said, you know, exactly what Pastor said, you know, we're not here to um, try and slam mm -hmm. anyone of that, but we want to encourage you. We really want to we just want to put a fight inside of you. That's what we want. We want to put the fire of God in your heart because, you know, especially for us that are here in Sydney, we're all in lockdown again. And I really, people need to understand that you need to exercise your dominion and power. You know, if, if we're too, you know, there's, there's a, a force of the world that is working against us right now. The spirit of fear is so rampant. Even in places like I've heard, you know, like South Africa and other nations are locking down. Because they say this is starting all over again. Well, my question is, where do we draw the line? Brothers and sisters, you have, if you're a minister of the gospel, where do you draw the line? Where are we going to say enough is enough? That the church is essential. Where yeah. are we going to exercise the dominion and authority? And that's what I mean, that we need to be vocal about this. Because a lot of right. people say we'll exercise dominion and authority, but we'll sit at home and we won't say nothing. Let me tell you, you need to exercise your dominion and your authority. I'm not talking about going around and Bible bashing everyone and saying they're wrong, this and that. No, I'm talking about living out the word of God, doing what God tells you to do, whatever that may be. You know, so, um, you know, I always thank God for Pastor Sai for jumping on and, and sharing with us tonight and dropping some, you know, man, some bro. golden nuggets on our, on our segment as always, you know, because... <clears throat> Man, I was hungry earlier, but I'm a bit full right now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but man, like I said, man, guys, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys so much. And um, man, like I said, we're going to break this down. You know, we really want to break down power and dominion. There's so many different parts you know, right, that man. we can break it down into that we need, that we want you to take a, you know, like Pastor was saying, to exercise dominion in those different areas of your life. Because that will, that's what it means to live in victory. Amen? To have a, a believer who living in dominion is a believer that understands victory and lives in victory every yeah. day, not once a week or when you feel like it, every day of your life. So, Doc, is there anything you want to say before we let Pastor say up? Um, just pray for the viewers tonight. No, no, I'm, I'm cool, man. And pass on to our brother uh, say to um, you know, just finish yourself with a prayer and that, and just pray for you know brothers and sisters that are tuning in. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is watching this live and on the real podcast. Yes. I thank you, Father, that faith is stirred up in their hearts. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that the eyes of their understanding will be opened yes. and that the revelation of the word will pierce their hearts, pierce their spirits, Father God, yes. and enable them to go into another level, another dimension yes. in their relationship and communion with you. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that just as we read that nothing we do for the Lord, nothing we do for you is in, ever in vain. Whether small or big, Father God, everything counts for the kingdom. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you, Lord, as we continue.